of those products where they are needed in the shape and feel that they are required by those who need them most at the time they need them. So health security is a key agenda for us and AMA is at the center and will really contribute towards the health security for this continent. So where are we coming from AMA? Why AMA? Why is AMA important? The issues of AMA is really key for us at the continental level because of uh, the need to avoid the differences within the continent, the way we do business because it's costing money. I've spoken to a few individuals who are in the industry, the manufacturing space, and you know what that means for you when a day ends without you getting an approval when a year ends without getting that approval, when five years ends without getting that approval, when WHO PQ process takes five years before you get that report. It means it has a direct cost implication. And where do you take that cost when you finally get it? Fresh it. So when you're talking about universal health coverage and reducing the catastrophic health expenditure of any person or within the country, we must look at what are the cost drivers. At some point, uh, there was a conversation, I think in 2021, that, oh, doctor's fee is so high. Doctor's fee is not the high. It is the cost of medicine. And the cost of medicine, we must look at what are the composites, what are the summations, what are the things, the inputs cost that really ends up into that final cost at the patient point of care. Regulatory harmonization is really key. So as the continent is driving towards universal health coverage, regulatory harmonization is at the center of all this, and AMA comes in there. And it's going to help us harmonize a lot of things, as we'll see. I wish you could be able to see the slides, but it's okay. So we want to move from a place where we have 55 member states doing different things. How many members? How many countries do you have in Africa? <laughs> I've said 55, I think 55. You're sure they're 55, baby. Authoritatively. <laughs> Somebody says 54. Yeah? There is one country that is neither here or there. So we talk about 55, but because we know that it's going to be recognized as a full fledged. Um, uh, uh, member state, but we're talking about 55. But in several documents, you see 54. So we want to move from where we have 55 member states doing their small things around regulatory harmonization, around regulation of medical products, to a point where we have five regions. We have five RECs, what you're calling the regional economics blocks. And then we'll also have one body, which is AMA. But we are not taking away the functions of the national regulatory uh, authorities, what we are calling the NRAs. And I'll get to that point. So we, the most important thing is how then do we harmonize the way we do things, our documents, our evaluation um, uh, our documents uh, should be standard, and then we drive towards regulatory reliance to the point that we have regulatory convergence. That is the way we are going to, as a continent. So technically, AMA, we, we already have the five regs. They are functioning. Some of you have interacted with the East Africa Medical Regulatory Organization. Some of you have uh, interacted with OAHO. Some of you have uh, interacted with Zazibona, depending on where you, you want uh, to register your products. We have a number of functions of AMA. And I have two, in fact, three slides of the functions of AMA, but I'll share uh, this with David. But I really want to speak to a few. One, AMA is going to, before I get to AMA, let me just speak to what AMA is about, what AMA is. So the Africa Medicines Agency is uh, an agency of the African Union. So it means heads of state approved that yes, this is something important for this continent, and they understood why. But for it to come into force, at least 15 member states had to ratify. On the 5th of October, on the 5th of October, 2021, we had the 15th country 
depositing the instruments of ratification to the African Union Commission. And therefore, the, by 30 days after that, which was the 5th of November, AMA came into force, 2021. So what does that mean? There are several processes that have to be taken because AMA is a treaty in itself. A treaty is when a treaty is different from a model law. Model law like um, we have the African Union model law on medical products regulation, which I would speak to on another day. You know, some of you have heard of KFDA, KDA. Uh, yes, <laughs> and uh, some of you wanted to crucify somebody somewhere. Yes, but I'll speak to that on another day. So, but that is also part of the AU model law on medical products regulation. But that's a model law. Treaties become part and parcel of a law of the country. So the moment we ratify it, it becomes part and parcel of our legislation and rule of law within the, within the country. And that's why it has to go through the full process of legislation. So member states, member countries have to ratify. But again, we must we recognize that different member states have different ways of ratifying that there are countries that went straight from a presidential declaration to signing. I think one or two countries. The rest has to go through uh, their parliamentary processes. So being that AMA came into force on the 5th of November 2021, the implementation is currently happening. And there are two streams of implementation that is happening. We have the operational side and we have the technical side. The operational side is being led by the African Union Commission setting up um, uh, the board, making sure we have the, the board that will then bring in a director general. The director general will then sit and um, uh, set up the secretariat. And by the way, all of you qualify to be part of that secretariat. So I've solid for you. I've just started preparing your CV. There will be. And it's a good place. Who doesn't want to be a diplomat? Because once you go work to that AUC, you automatically become a diplomat. So there will be that. So last month in June, the Conference of State Parties met. They approved the job description for the DG. And please, 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 if you know somebody who needs to be a DG of the AMA, let them prepare. I've spoken to the PPP, I've spoken to people in the ministry. We need to position somebody at, uh, from Kenya for that position. So that will be coming out. The board was not fully set up because the board, um, the criteria was not was not doing it up. So we have they have until second of August to set up the board. The conference of state party has until August second to set up the board uh, fully. Even though we thought it would happen in June. So after that, so that is the operational side. The technical side, a lot is happening, and the technical side is being led by the African Union Development Agency, currently being spearheaded by the Africa Medicines Regulatory Harmonization Initiative. And within it, there are several technical committees. I sit in one called the Medicines Policy and Regulatory Harmonization. Medicines Policy and Regulatory Reforms, TC, Technical Committee. And there's also the other one, uh, Africa Medicines Diagnostics Forum, which is led by one of our very own, uh, Pauline Wairimo, uh, from the Pharmacy and Poisons Board. So we have about nine technical committees. There are one on blood and blood products, there's one on, uh, on surveillance, um, and several others. So we have, so generally what I was trying to drive to is, AMA is currently starting to be operationalized in different ways, and they are being driven um, uh, parallel to each other. So the treaty having been established by the uh, heads of state, that was in 2019, and so far, we have 23 countries that are fully ratified. And what does full ratification mean? Full ratification means the country has gone through its process and they have deposit their instruments of ratification to the African Union Commission. This morning, I'm saying 23 because I've not confirmed. I, was, I just received news from the AUC that DRC and Cape mm -hmm. Verde submitted their instruments. I've not seen it because I've, I've not gone. So I said 23 because I don't want to be quoted. I said 25 when they are still 23. So just know that they're 23 plus two. I have it written plus two in red. 
So we could be at 25 full member states that have fully ratified the African Medicines Agency. And we are gearing towards um, um, uh, the 55 of, of, of them. I'm doing a lot of work in Kenya, South Africa, and now I'll be doing some push in Tanzania and uh, Nigeria. Um, what would be the value proposition? Over the next few years, Africa is opening up to the pharmaceutical industry. In 2021, 2021-2022, I think for those who like watching and knowing what's happening there, current affairs, you realized we had Africa-US summit, no, they start with the US-Africa summit, I don't know why. Then there was the Russia-Africa summit, there was the uh, China-Africa summit, then there was the UK, I think there was also UK-Africa summit. Why is everybody doing, looking forward to summits with Africa? And right now, as we speak, there are a lot of the big farmers looking forward to setting up in the continent. It's because the next biggest market is in Africa. And countries like Kenya and need to be, are still, because we, we still lead within East Africa, you know, as the biggest pharmaceutical industry, from a dollar point of view, and even industry. We have a number of industries here. So at the end of the day, there's a lot of pharmaceutical, or rather manufacturing work, let me say not pharmaceutical, HPT, that is going to happen within the continent, by and large. So the biggest market is going to be in Africa. So what does that do? It opens up the R&D space, it opens up the manufacturing, but we must also prepare the skill set, the capacities, as well as the consumers. And in those three places where we need to prepare, there's a huge gap, a huge one. And that's why such things that, uh, such as this that APN is doing is great. So being that we are opening up the market for pharmaceutical, we must make the industry, the ecosystem nimble enough to allow products that are safe, effective, and efficacious get into the market faster because we know what that means. We know that the longer it takes, the more it will cost at the pocket. We cannot get to the point of UNC if that doesn't happen. We also know that if we are to be competitive within the continent, at the moment, yes, we are looking forward to procuring, and there's some work I'm doing with Africa CDC. We just launched during the World Health Assembly what we are calling the Harmonized Africa Health Manufacturing Platform. One of the core things that the manufacturing platform would do is to strengthen the pooled procurement and other pooled procurement mechanisms in Africa. But we all know that if we are to procure from the local, and this is for the local industry, for the local, and I was telling somebody, we are also trying to redefine what does local mean. If we are to do this as a continent, there are things that we must put in place. We must look at, can we take up the liability of that extra dollar shilling quarter that is going to be on that price of paracetamol that we are going to buy from Universal as opposed to importing it from India. And what does that mean? So we are looking at the economies of scale and making sure that, one, we are more coordinated within the continent. Because if Kenya is producing, uh, my good friends from Biobax, they, are wanted, they, want, they, want, they started with uh, COVID-19. Uganda wanted to do mRNA. Rwanda was going to do mRNA vaccine. Who, is, who was going to be there? Where is the market? So we need to look and coordinate ourselves within the continent and strengthen what, because we have all these diseases, including neglected tropical diseases, and the market does not need to be within the country. The least we can look at as a pharmaceutical setup of industry is the region. So when, when I say region, it's now East Africa. If we are within, if it is within West Africa, it should be the ECOWAS. Those should be the least. So when we are looking at the industries that are operating within this region, we, I do not need to produce something that is already being produced in. Or if we are producing that, then we must look at how are we uh, leveraging on the other regions so that we open up the market for the 1.2, oh no, 1.3, 1.4 billion 
citizens within the continent. So technically, that, those are some of the things we are doing. Because when we do that, then one, we are going to be able to, within a very short time, of course, take the liability of the extra costs of the product. But within a very short time, we will be reducing that cost within the continent because we are now getting more volumes and our governments are procuring from us. So the biggest procurer of any medical product is government. And we know that if governments are not going to procure from the local industry, then we are, we are lost. So the other thing that we are trying to do, sorry, I'm going up back and forth, is to really influence the policy environment for procurement. So what does our um, public procurement and disposal act say? I think you guys must have seen the biovac situation. How many followed the biovac issue in South Africa about uh, two months ago? No? Pardon? You did. So let me just tell you what happened. South Africa owns 47.5% of shares in biovac. Not biovax. We have our biovax here. That is biovac in South Africa. And uh, they, were, they wanted to procure PCV vaccines. And they could not because the law is only pegged on the tendering process and they could only procure the lowest cost. Right? So what does that do? It locks local manufacturing. It locks governments from procuring from a local manufacturer to which they own 47.5% of the shares. That was a good case scenario for us. And on my advisory to the president, on behalf of South Africa, but also for the continent, we put in certain measures. And if you're following, you realize the Public Procurement and Disposal Act of South Africa is currently in debate in parliament because they are going to change something. Kenya, we are also facing a similar issue. So we are also looking at how then do we make sure that our governments procure from within the continent first, of course, they would first procure milk from the country, then the region, and then the continent. When they're, they're looking out, before now they go outside the continent. But still, as long as we can procure more from within, then that's great. So that is one of the reasons that's why AMA is needed. Because the longer we take, the more costly it will be, and it will be so difficult to defend such a huge variant. So with AMA, we are looking at strengthening the local industry. So I need to move faster. AMA will also enhance the realization of, uh, and I had uh, uh, David mention this, the pharmaceutical manufacturing plan for Africa. I don't know how many people have heard of PMPA. We are all in the industry. PMPA, how many? <laughs> but please, if you are a pharmacist and you are in this industry, there are certain things that you not pass you. <laughs> there is no way you can, let me use a Christian or whatever, you, this is you can say I'm a Christian when you don't even know that the Bible exists, right? <laughs> At least the best you can tell, you can, is just to know that a Bible exists, right? So please, there are certain things that are like the Bible for you. They are. And you write, just, even if you don't know the intrigue, the things with it. Just, just know that there's something called PMPA, Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Plan for Africa, and what it, it entails. So it's going to really help us get there. So I was getting to the point where I was saying there are certain functions of AMA. So AMA would promote cooperation, partnership, and recognition of regulatory decisions in support of regional structures and any marriage. Regional structures are like the AMA one, There'll be the RECs and now the NMRS, National Medicines Regulatory Authorities, or NRS, which is the National Reg Regulatory Authorities. It will also provide guidance on regulation of traditional medicine. I have to put that there, because I know many people have been asking, where is the place for traditional medicine? It's a big conversation at the continent level, at country level. We have a, a division of traditional medicine, which is being led by uh, Pauline Duya at the Ministry of Health. We also have somebody at Cambridge who deals with traditional medicine. 
We have people at the African CDC who will be dealing with traditional medicine, but we do not have really mechanisms to regulate traditional medicine because of the, the variance of toxicities and just how to regulate it. So we need to strengthen there. The truth is, traditional medicines work. They work. I'm not a herbalist, but yes, they work. <laughs> <laughs> they work. And we just need to harness the active ingredients in them and make them and package them better. So it is going to really help us strengthen. And we are Africans. We can't run away from the fact that a lot of the traditional medicines, maybe not in this group, maybe myself and Chris Odero there and above, uh, treated us. Yes? And they work. So it's how do we make sure that we create room for all these traditional medicines and regulate them properly. There's a lot that AMA will do, but I'll, I'll speak to some. It will also evaluate and decide on selected medical products. A lot of the time, one of the fears that I've received from NMRAs, typical Kenya and South Africa, is that when AMA comes, it's going to take away our responsibility. No. AMA is not coming to do the routine works we do and the regular molecules that we are regulating. AMA is going to look at some of the complex molecules that are right now we have mRNA vaccines. A lot of work is still happening there with very few capacities. We just trained people in 2020, 2021 on the mRNA work. Not us, I, I was part of that, but the Africa CDC and uh, there was quite a lot that was happening during that time. We also have the DNA vaccine. We have the monoclonal antibodies. We have, there's quite a bit of new technologies and platforms that are coming into the space that we do not have any single uh, capacity in any NMRA or REC to regulate. So AMA will do that. And by the way, AMA is not going to have other regulators. It's going to draw regulators from the, within the member states that are there. Already we have five member states that have achieved maturity level three. Kenya, Badu, Tukumai. We are, we are going there. We are out of the 176, I think about 53 recommendations are, are still remaining. But we have two countries that have reached ML3 for vaccines and three for medicines. And we are getting there. So we will be able to draw from these regulators. And Kenya has one of the best regulators in this continent across the globe. So AMA will be drawing from these member states to be able to, one, train them, but also support in terms of regulating some of these complex molecules, and then countries will adopt them as they are, especially all member countries that have, um, that have um, uh, ratified AMA. So when it comes to AMA and Africa's economic growth and development, there's, there'll be a lot of alignment of the requirements and standards. Because one thing that we are facing is the, uh, the standards for the regulation of any product has been at the regulatory. And remember, AMA is also coming in and will also be regulating the clinical trials. So the thing is, it will have more or less an end-to-end -end kind of. It will also, in terms of supporting the Africa continental free trade area, that's also another new terminology. How many people have had those Africa continental free trade area? I've seen one hand at least, yeah. Yeah, at least I'm happy. Those are three. There's what we're calling the Africa continental free trade area. When it was fully, that was also ratified and all that. The only problem we are currently having is that we can move, goods can move freely, but people cannot move the goods. So how, how will the goods move? <laughs> so that, that's, a, that's a, a technicality that I don't think we pre Africa members preempted, because goods must move with the people, right? So the, 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 there's that, it's being sorted out anyway. But when we are talking about free movement of goods and services, pharmaceuticals is also at the center, right? Because we need, we need to produce something in Nairobi at nine, and by four, it should be in Senegal, in Tunisia, or somewhere, by 4 p.m. So technically, looking at how we goods move. So we are also aligning to the Africa continental free trade areas. It will catalyze trade in support of the Africa continental free trade area, depending the Africa integration and enabling the development of markets 
for health commodities, generally the health markets. As I said initially, we must consume what we are producing and we must be part of the clinical trials of what we want to produce. And um, the other thing is it will also take on existing initiatives such as uh, we, we have the AMRH, the AVA, AVA. How many people have heard of the Africa vaccine? The AMRF. Now I've forgotten that. Yes, yes, because of COVID-19, right? <laughs> <laughs> so AVAREF is one of the TCs, the technical committees under the Africa Medicines um, Regulatory Harmonization Initiative. That is one of the nine that I mentioned earlier. So we, it is also supporting that. And then it is also support the coordination and advocacy by, you know, coordination of ongoing regulatory systems strengthening and harmonizing efforts of the African Union Commission, the RECs, um, and also, you know, advocate for domestication of the AU model law medical products regulation. Anytime I mention AU model law within this space, I am afraid any bottle can come my way anytime. So I'm, I'm very keen. <laughs> but AU model law, because when we are talking about the AU model, and allow me just use this opportunity because there's a lot of misconception around the KFDA. I had a meeting the other day with the PSK team. There's a lot of misconception on the, the we've removed D, the F, so it's KDA, but I, I still don't agree with the name. It should be the Medicines and Medical Products Bill. I know it will come through that name by the tenants. So let me call it the KDA now because that's what we have. That KDA is a good instrument, but if one day you'll allow, I'll speak on why KDA is really important because KDA is aligning to some of the things I've mentioned on harmonization it will also push us towards maturity level. One of the reasons why Kenya could not attain maturity level three is because we, are not, we do not have an autonomous authority in itself. And therefore we need to move there. And if we do not do that, the products that PPB is regulating cannot be used, can only be used within these peripheries of this continent, of this country. When we reach maturity level three, when PPP, that will be now the authority, regulates, we will produce something at seven, and by seven it will be somewhere in Europe. Because once you achieve that level, then you are able to go beyond the borders of this continent. And we need to open, if Kenya is leading within the pharmaceutical industry with the power that we have, we need to open up the market for all of these industries that are operating here, plus others that are willing to come in to be able to produce here but sell globally. There are structures of the Africa Medicines Agency. I just talked about the Conference of State Parties. So that is going to be the highest policy organ. So the Conference of State Parties will be consisting of the Ministers of Health. On behalf of the President, there will also be the nine-member governing board. That nine-member governing board, I want to go on a in June, in terms of the cons Already, the way it was set up, the regs were to appoint one of the countries that have already ratified AMA to sit in the board. Kenya, our Kenya representative was there, could not even say a word, because Kenya has not fully ratified AMA. But we are there. We are soon getting there. But that is why we are going to base it. Even when the other DG position comes, we might lose it because Kenya has not fully ratified that. Of course, we've ratified, I'll tell you, we've ratified it apparently already. But until we submit, we are not considered to fully ratified. So, and then we, there'll be the technical committees, and then we'll have the secretariat. And that's where I said you can sit. I mean, you can be anywhere, of course, except the members, the board. Because the boards, the people sitting in the board are the heads of the NRAs, like the Pharmacy and Poisons Board. They are the ones who then sit in the board over a period of about, I think it's about three years, uh, that rotates. I should be finalizing. Yeah? Yes. So uh, there's a lot of value addition for AMA, which I'll skip for now. But AMA is not, will not. Um, AMA will be a platform for NRAs and RECs. It will complement the NRS and REX effort. It will be an advisory institution and it will rely on other regulatory authorities, the issue of regular, regulatory reliance. But it will not be a standalone institution functioning independently. 
It will not replace the functions of the NMRS and REDS. It will not be a binding institution with power to enforce decisions. Remember, AMA can make the decisions, but countries can still have uh, customize some of the decisions to fit their context, and it will not duplicate the already performed uh, work. So where are we in Kenya? Allow me to go through this pretty fast. One, in 2021, the Ministry of Health, through the Pharmacy and Poisons Board, um, uh, started the process of AMA, uh, developing the AMA documents. I was glad to be part of that team that we developed those documents and prepared it for the CS. In 2022, it was approved by cabinet and then it moved to parliament. In 2023, we've seen a lot. Um, we've seen the signing. There are two things around AMA. There are countries that have signed, there are countries that have ratified. There's a difference. Now I don't have the time to explain. You see, I'm being looked at with uh, four <laughs> eyes that are not really good. Um, so we signed AMA in February of 2023, which was a good show. But, uh, and then there was a call for participation that happened again in February. And we did it with Parliament. Uh, um, there was a meeting, I've seen the nice photo I had here, um, at Crown Plaza or Manikyo, they're called Makiwa, Makiwa Hotel. And then uh, it moved to Parliament. It was ratified in Parliament in April. So Kenya, we've already approved it. Yesterday and even today I spoke to the Ambassador uh, Waweru uh, on its ratification because from April to now, it's not been deposited to AUC. But Waweru Ambassador promised that it, they are really working hard. You know that right now we have the midterm uh, summit, right, in Nairobi, with everybody streaming in. So again, his office is quite bogged in there, but he's promised that at least before the end of this month, Kenya will have the positive and really push it hard. My greatest call for you, I know you want to be in the country, but also have elections across the continent, let's convince advocate for all member states, for those who signed, those who have not yet signed or ratified, to fully ratify.